It's 11, Johanna. You want me to start the meeting? Yes. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to call the a meeting to order for the Commission on the Status of Women. And of course, I wanted to welcome everybody, and especially Dr. Waddell and Dr. Richardson, who are attending in person, and Johanna. And we will have a um, guest speaker today in a little bit. But um, my name is Jean Nathy, and I'm the vice Amelia? chair. Yeah. I'm on the I Zoom call. I need you to take care of this dog for me. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Anyway, it's my pleasure to fill in for Sheriff Pollock. She had some uh, scheduled time off, and um, so I'm filling in for her. And I just wanted to, you know, welcome everybody. I see um, Gail is here. I'm just going to kind of do roll call um, and look to make sure we have everybody checked off. Um, I do not see Kelly Sin, Teresa or Summer Robertson. Do we have um, Amanda Maggard from Florida Hospital on or Kristen McCall? Kristen McCall is on. Welcome, Kristen. I hope that she can hear me. Welcome to the Commission on the Status of Women meeting. And um, in a little bit, we will ask you to speak. And in the meantime, there we're, we're down to the public comment part of the agenda. Do we have anyone here for public comment, Tracy? There's no one here for public comment. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Um, We are going to look at the minutes from the last meeting, and I'm going to ask for the approval of the minutes from the June meeting. It was a virtual meeting June 1st, and hopefully everybody's had a chance to look over the minutes and um, Asking for somebody to make a motion to approve. This is Jenny C. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the June 1st meeting. Thank you, Jenny. Is there a second? This is Gail Armstrong. I second. Thanks, Gail. Um, is there any discussion? about the minutes, um, any corrections, additions? If not, I call for a vote. All in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Now we're going to our guest speaker part of the agenda, and I see Kristen McCall on deck. Hello, Kristen. Welcome. I think you're muted. I can't hear. Do you want to ask somebody to take minutes? Yes. Right now. Can you hear me? There you go. Nobody's taking the minutes. Who can do that? Who can take the minutes? We can hear you now, Chris. Oh, there you go. Try again. One of us. It's supposed to be the secretary. Who is the secretary? Summer. Summer. She's not here. And Lovey shows her back up. Okay. So I'll ask. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you okay, hear me? Okay, Kristen. Yes, we can now. Okay, great. Great. Do we have Lori on the line? Lauren no. Maselli? Okay. Yes. Yes, that's me. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, Chris, no, Chris. I'm sorry. We have another Lori, Lori from Advent Health. Is she on the line? Okay. Oh, I see her. Perfect. Okay. Hi. Oh, wonderful. Hey, Lori. Um, Hi. How are you doing? 
Doing great. great. Thank you. Hi. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Lori sits at um, Advent Hall Zephyr Hills and oversees the entire Simpson Breast, Breast Health um, Center. So I thought that she would begin from some of that clinical side, and then I would end with the foundation side. Um, so if that's okay with you, Lori, you can go ahead. Yes, thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for allowing me to speak on behalf of Advent Health Zephyr Hills and the Simpson Breast Health Center. Uh, my name is Lori Hitzel. I'm the Administrator Director of Ancillary Clinical Services here at Dade City and Zephyr Hills. Um, just a little bit of history, if you haven't been too familiar or even to the Simpson Breast Health Center, uh, we opened in 2012 um, with the goal of being dedicated solely to your breast health. It was a place where our community, the need was here. Um, it was a place where our patients and families did not have to travel into the city, where we could keep them at home, close by, take care of them, um, and kind of guide them along the journey if that was needed. Um, we have nearly about 3,000 patients annually um, that travel through our um, Simpson Breast Health Center, both men and women. Um, men also come and, and need that care as well, so we're here to support them too. Um, our skilled physicians use some of the most advanced detection tools available today, including 2D, 3D um, mammography. We have contrast enhanced spectral mammography, breast ultrasound that includes elastography, and breast biopsy capabilities to support and guide early diagnosis. You deserve services in a comfortable spa-like environment to create a soothing and pleasant experience during your visit. Most recently, we've added our newest technology to our mammograms. And this is probably one of my favorite fun tools, um, kind of aside from a, it helps with clinical, but it's really neat. It's called, um, it's actually called the Duetta, but it's the first ever patient assisted compression device. So we as women finally have some control during an exam. Um, it gives us the sense of control during our mammograms. So under the guidance and supervision of our mammographer, women can play an active role in determining their level of breast compression with the help of a remote control. So now compression should be one less reason to avoid getting your annual mammogram. We are also one in three facilities in the state of Florida to offer contrast enhanced spectrum mammography. And I know it sounds like it's really technical. Um, it's actually, if you've ever had a CAT scan or known someone that has, has had a CAT scan, sometimes we inject contrast into the vein. Um, so it's a simple procedure um, and it has been amazing. Um, I wish I had Dr. Rippey, he's our, our medical director of the breast center here to talk about it. So I think it's one of his favorite um, aspects in detection. And it's one of those pieces that, you know, there's there's no one clear cut way um, when it when it comes to detecting some breast cancers, and this is just one extra aid in that journey. Um, that that finding the ability to to find a lesion, and and it's 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 wonderful that um, our foundation and our community has supported us in um, being able to have this technology available for our community in East Pasco. Um, our team of specialists are here to guide you through any treatments needed through our patient navigators. We are here for you, um, for your health and wellness. So we also offer an extensive breast health resource library. We offer lifestyle and nutrition counseling and support groups to help nurture your mind and spirit. Also, please find comfort that we have taken extra precautions to help keep you safe. So please do not put off having your annual screening mammogram or your um, bone density exam because of COVID-19. We have remained open and will continue to serve you. I know you guys are such a resource in the community and um, it, it, we just love the fact that you're right here in Day City and Zephyr Hills um for us and and everything i do have a note here that um we might want to discuss ways to be involved um as a commission with the breast cancer awareness month in october and do you have any you guys have anything planned 
Um, actually, we work with our um, marketing department, but we I would love to, if, if it's something that you would like to get involved with to uh, put you in connection with our marketing, um, we're always open to support, um, having our community support. That would be wonderful. Okay, great. Is there like a, a summary recap that you might be able to forward to us as a document that we can kind of include? Um, you know, inform, from information from you from today? Yes, so I can forward you our, um, our brochure that we have with the phone numbers and how to connect with um, our center. Yes, ma'am. Perfect, thank you so much, Laurie. We appreciate you chiming in. Thank and you so Kristen, much, a pleasure. So, pleasure just to have you. And Kristen, it's always good to see you. And um, you too. I'm proud to serve with Kristen on the foundation board and they're doing a lot of great things for the hospital and the community so we appreciate you um you you guys can stay on and be part of the rest of the meeting or we're going to move on to other business it's it's up to you guys um but thank you again for joining our meeting today we appreciate it thank you all we appreciate it we're going to number eight old business and updates um we have a, a meeting scheduled tomorrow or i'm I actually we're gonna i'm gonna speak tomorrow at the commissioner's meeting um to present the work program summary it's an annual thing that is done and um cheryl is cheryl pollock our chair is still out so i will fill in for her and report um the work program study or summary. Okay, the resolution in honor of the Women's History Month and the Women's Suffrage Centennial will be scheduled once resolutions can be read during the board meetings. You know, at this time, due to COVID, uh, resolutions are only being placed on the consent agenda for approval. Since this is a very meaningful resolution, we are going to table this until it can be read in person on that. Okay, we're going to move on to fundraisers, the luncheon or the breakfast, possibly in the spring fall of 2021. Um, does anybody have any comment on that possible dates, location options? This is Lauren. I haven't had a chance to speak with Summer about it. She hasn't been at the last couple commission meetings that we've had, but um, I wanted to bring it up again to you all because obviously we're in the middle of this pandemic still. So um, just from the Pasco EDC side, we've done a lot of surveying with our investors and people that we work with on the comfortability of in-person meetings right now, even smaller scale. And a lot of people are still working remote as a lot of us are remote on this phone call still at the moment. So what do you ladies think we should do right now? Um, it is our kickoff event. So I don't want to prematurely plan something that still may not be able to be done in person. And, um, you know, we, we just don't have that following yet. It was already going to be something new that we were introducing the community and we'd have to work a little bit harder to get attendees from that perspective. So I'm just nervous to kind of set anything in stone at this moment. But I wanted to bring it up for discussion. So what do you all think? I think a lot of it's going to depend on what Governor DeSantis, um, you know, announces for like phase three. Is there going to be a phase three? We, we haven't even got to the second part of phase two that they have yet. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I know there's just a lot of different events that are being canceled because the unsurety of everything. Right. And like, I think Pasco County still has that 50 person rule where you, you can't have an event if it's more than 50 people. I and believe that's the whole state. Yeah. So, you know, my gut says that we should wait for better direction before we try to pick a date. I know there's, you know, I noticed a couple golf tournaments that are gonna happen, but it's, that's more 
of an outdoor. Yeah, that's very easy to social distance at because they have people ride in the separate carts and everything. So yeah, yeah. Okay. So when you're talking about a luncheon or a breakfast, I mean, you're talking about everybody in one room, right? I I don't know how you can actually pick a date until you get better clarification from our county and our governor. I agree. I think that maybe we wait, um, maybe even next month to see after the school's opening, what happens with that. If they open on, on schedule still, um, if there's an, an increase in the number of cases, because right now we're kind of on that summer break. So we don't really know mm -hmm. if at that point, if something does go wrong, if the governor is going to reel that back in or anything. So maybe once we see how the school's going back, take off um maybe then we could at least start talking on the back end more about what we'd like to like see go into the program and maybe we can try and do more of the back end stuff and not necessarily the date planning per se but maybe we can work on forming some partnerships and what the actual event would look like um pending events being allowed to resume again does that sound okay to everyone sounds fine to me yeah. So since we're not going to have a September meeting, we'll make sure that that's on the agenda for October. I think that would probably be perfect timing to give us a little two month break to see what's happening with everything. Okay, well, that, that's my update. Obviously, I feel like everyone kind of knew that's where we'd be at, but. Well, thank you, Lauren. We appreciate your input on that. Okay, so obviously that's that's put off. Um, Morgan, um, the next thing uh, is about the, the badges for the new members. And I believe Dr. Waddell got hers, I got mine. Um, and the other couple that are on there, Rhonda and Teresa, did those come in? Yeah, they're here. Okay. So whenever I the rest of the members come in in person or whenever we see them again, they can, I'll continue to hold on to them. Great. Uh, next item is about an article that um, I've been drafting and don't have it finalized yet. I was trying to work with Kelly Mother's Head on that. We are, we tried like three times to get together and it didn't line up. So we, um, we're going to have something uh, for the commission to to proof before we send it out the the intent was to make sure we get it in the Florida women magazine, which is a local publication and do like a press release. Um, to let everybody know that we there is a status. Of women out there and that we 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 do have resources. Um, you know, we we have a Facebook page. Um, you know, just it's it's more about getting everybody familiar with what we do and what we're about. So as soon as all that can come together, I will present it to Cheryl for her um, approval before it goes out to the media. Next is the involvement, like in the chambers, chambers of commerce. Wow. Um, um, the commission wants to have representatives at the professional women in business meetings that occur on the third Wednesday of every month. And I believe um, Rosario volunteered to be the representative. Rosario, do you want to chime in on that? I think she's got her mic turned off. Now, Rosario, can, can you hear us? Can we we can't hear you. Do you have your mic off? Okay, let me try one time. Could you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Okay. Um, I submit my application. I, I don't receive the confirmation yet, but I continue to participate in the Spanish Chamber of Commerce of Tampa Bay. I introduce commission status women. If we have some program or fundraiser or something more. We, they can help uh, uh, the commission start to work. For now, in Pasco County, I am waiting for my application. Oh, okay. okay. Great. 
But if you have you. other option, uh, I don't know, somebody more told me before, let me know. I can I can participate in another chamber. But all chambers open only virtual. They don't have meetings in person. Right, right. Are, are we a member of the Chambers of Commerce? So from my understanding, um, Kelly is a member and she was gonna try to see if maybe she could send one of the CSW members. And I think that's where Rosario volunteered. Okay. But I think that's still in the works. And since Kelly isn't here today, okay. we okay. might have to table that for discussion for the October meeting agenda. Sounds good, thank you. Um, also, it, uh, to have the CSW members become speakers at the WOW and WOW two events now being held virtually. Cheryl reaching out to Hope Kennedy, women of East Pasco, and Kelly was going to reach out to find out how we can get involved and have a representative to attend those meetings. Summer Robertson suggested working with other commissions, human trafficking, to present to Leadership Pasco and Leadership Tampa Bay, also suggested commu communication from CSW would be shared with the database of homeowners associations, associations for inclusions in their newsletter. And again, Summer's not here today, so we can't really follow up on that. Yep, so we'll, we'll add it to the October meeting agenda. I believe that um, Leadership Pasco was canceled for the year since that had so many in-person meetings as well. Okay. Good to know. All right, number 10, we're gonna move on to chairs update a new business. Um, the CSW reappointments to July, 2025, which is an eight year max by commissioners due to three term completion. And I know that we've been um, updating our roster with um, folks that want to serve another three-year term. Yeah. Um, Kelly oh. Mothershead through Commissioner Moore and Gail Armstrong through Commissioner Wells. Um, let's see, Mothershead. So whoever was originally appointed in 2017, your three-year term is up. So if if you want to stay on serving on the CSW, we would need to get a reappointment letter from your appointing organization. Yes, I see that they're through 2025 now. So um, Cheryl Pollock has put in for hers, correct? Yep, so as I receive the reappointment letters, I'll add them to the next available board meeting agenda. Okay. And then they'll go before approval. And this is Gail Armstrong. Mike Wells' office reached out to me about a week ago, so hopefully that'll be coming soon. Great. Awesome. Yep, he actually um, brought up your reappointment at the last board meeting. So that went through. Yes. Yeah, I see you're to 2025 now, Gail, on the... Um, yep, both the Kelly and Gail were reappointed at the last board meeting by their appointing commissioners. And then for the African American Club, um, on the agenda for the August 19th is reappointment or appointment of Leona Schuler. Um, and we are grateful for, to Alicia for her time served and would like to present to her a certificate and a letter in appreciation of her three years of service on the CSW, which will be actually presented at the next meeting? Or well, will that be? This would be her last meeting. So we're gonna mail it out to her. Okay. And okay. Leona will I'll, attend. I'll, can you hear me? I just wanted to say thank you for um, this opportunity. Uh, I've heard a bit from the um, commission. I think that Leona Shula is going to be a wonderful addition to your committee, your commission. Well, thank you. And we appreciate you, Alicia, for thank you. your time served on the commission. Yes. And we hope that you keep in touch with us. 
I will through I will through Leona. And I told her I told her that I was willing to help her in any way possible. Very good. Thank you so much. Um, we are still waiting to hear from Commissioner Mariano's office for a nominee. So if there's anybody that you know that's in his district, you might want to suggest to him that would be greatly appreciated. All right, so we're going to move on to uh, looks like here a message Johanna will connect Jenna and Megan from the domestic violence task force with the county's misdemeanor probation department to talk about how they can get involved. Yeah, during their presentation at the last meeting, um, the members of the CSW had asked if there was any way that that you all could help them and they had brought up that they wanted to make that connection. So because misdemeanor probation is is a county department, I facilitated that connection. So I emailed um, Tracy Toner, who manages misdemeanor probation and um, explained to her what what the task force is looking for. And she she mentioned that there had been a connection in the past and that she'll be sure to connect with them again so that that can be reestablished. Great. Thank you for doing that. Um, I was scheduled to attend the virtual STEAM conference at St. Leo University. <laughs> I was registered and I was looking forward to it this past Saturday, August 1st, but then I, at the last minute we got a notice that it was postponed, I believe. Um, and we have our one and only Dr. Waddell here, so maybe you can tell us when it's postponed to. I think that we're going day by day at St. Leo Whatever you can capture with the pandemic. Uh, they've got several different plans going on for telehealth to come back to school. So this is just probably one of the other you know, components that are going to be unveiled as we go along. So to be announced. <laughs> so I do hope that does happen because it looked super interesting. Some wonderful speakers. So I'm, I'm hoping we'll, I'll be able to attend that. I did want to um, ask out there if anybody attended the virtual suffrage tea with our Secretary of State, uh, Lauren Lee. This was back in July. Did anybody attend I did. that virtually? You did? Yeah. Oh, tell us about it. Uh, so she provided an overview of um, like a history of women in Florida who had um, like made made it a point to to make a difference in, in women's suffrage. And um, interestingly, a lot of uh, the women that are mentioned in the resolution that we helped put together, uh -huh. uh, she mentioned them in, in her report. So, so that was nice. Oh, okay, very good. So that would mean Pasco County got recognized basically too, some of the ladies. That's awesome. All right, moving on. We are um, updating the Facebook page. And I've been working with Johan Johanna on that. And um, she gave me access to that. Um, I've already uploaded our palm card to our Facebook page. So if you could please go to our Facebook page, like the page, and then share it and ask your friends and other women um, that you think might be interested in, in, in our commission to like it as well. Um, I'd like to monitor the count on the Facebook page. I know we were up over a couple hundred now, um, but every meeting, I, I think it would be nice if we could just recap um, how far we're reaching out and you know, getting the word out about our commission and services for women. Sure, and if, if anybody would like access to be able to um, edit the Facebook page, let me know and I'll give you guys access. And whenever we get back together again, um, we'll, we'll take an up, updated picture with all of our members. Um, not sure when that would be. We could try for October and 
see what happens. Um, and maybe by then we'll have somebody for com um, Commissioner Mariano um, and Metropolitan Ministries. That's another one that's vacant too. Yeah, so Cheryl reached out to Metropolitan Ministries um, to see if we could get in contact with someone there to let them know that we'd like them to reappoint a new nominee. Okay. Okay. Uh, Joanna, I'm sorry. I can have your website, uh, Facebook page if you send me the information or the password or link. Sure. I can help you. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll okay. Add you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so moving on, we have no meeting in September due to Labor Day. And as we mentioned, our next meeting will be October 5th. And it look, it'll be a, well, a virtual hybrid again. Possibly. Okay. Uh, to be announced. To be announced. <laughs> okay. And next on the agenda. A reminder to the CSW members that they must notify Johanna or the chair, which is Cheryl, if they are unable to make a meeting as they are as they are members that have had a number of excused absences out there. Below is the verbiage from the CSW ordinance about attendance. So basically what, what it's about is if you can't make a meeting, please call in and get like an excused absence. Um, let somebody know if you're able to make it or not. We only meet not even 12 times for the year. You know, we're usually meeting less than that. So it's not a it's not a huge commitment. And, and to be able to do any business or move forward, we need quorums. And it's imperative that, you know, we try to, if you've agreed to be on the commission, you try to make the meetings. Ready. All right, review of assignments is next. A is the CSW's role with domestic violence focus, collectively coming up with an option, steps to include in the next work program. So the next work program will be due the beginning of the year. Okay. Uh, the one that you're presenting tomorrow was postponed because of, of the virus, but it was supposed per, to be back in April. It was originally scheduled for March, March, but per the CSW's ordinance, it's supposed to be done the beginning of the year. So because we're not meeting until October, so October, November, December, mm -hmm. you'll only have three meetings before the new work program is is would have to be scheduled to go before the, the board again. And since Cheryl's our chair, would she be the one directing that to put that together? So it's a team effort. Team effort. She would just present it, but she would need everyone's help okay. to come up with the new work program. So let me ask this about the September meeting. Since we're not meeting, um, we don't have a special meeting. We we can't really interact or do anything towards any of these items without. So because of Sunshine Law, you have to provide minutes. Yeah. Okay. So in October, we'll visit that again on the agenda. Correct. Correct. And speaking of minutes, um, so the CSW secretary is in charge of taking minutes at the meetings. And when the secretary is absent, uh, she's supposed to find someone to one of the other members to to cover for her. I believe that was Alicia. But now that Alicia is leaving, we'll have to add that to the agenda for the next meeting. And I have been trying to take some minutes. I have I'm been, hoping that I've been doing the same. Oh, good. But between us, we'll collaborate and we will have minutes for this meeting. Okay. Thank you. This, this is, and I appreciate that. <laughs> this is Alicia. Isn't this, this is not recorded as well? Yep, it is. 
so it it's it would help us with well, the minutes. We have access to the recording. Yeah. Okay. If perfect. To, uh, if you go to YouTube and type in Pasco County Government, mm -hmm. then you'll be able to access the YouTube. Got it. Do you need a password for that or anything? Okay. I sent out the link for the last two meetings that have been held virtually, the two YouTube links. But it's pretty easy to find. You just go on YouTube and type in CS, Pasco CSW and it comes right up. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, an activity of the CSW would be part of for Breast Cancer Awareness Month in October, which we, we highlighted on that with um, our Advent Health Simpson Breast Center folks. Maybe we can do like a tie in there. And do we need like somebody to be the point person for that? The Simpson for the possible breast cancer awareness in October? So whoever is part of the event subcommittee, I don't know if that's something that they want to do, but a committee would be formed, a subcommittee would be formed to to handle the planning of, of such things. Do we want to put that on the agenda for October? Or since, I mean, it's so close. Yeah. How do we? I think that the, the easiest thing to do would be maybe if, if there are events that you guys are aware of, we could share it on our Facebook page or things like that, just to help promote it. Help promote, okay. This is um, Alicia again. Um, for this breast cancer, maybe we can send out an email to the members to see if anybody wants to be a part of a planning committee for us to participate in an event. Yep, that's something that we can add to the agenda because it has to be included in the minutes. Okay. Okay. And there again, number C is talks about special event subcommittee planning for the event for the spring fall. And I, I think that it will tie in with um, the line item for the agenda in October when we're going to revisit all that. Number D, members whose three years term is up, please have a conversation with your appointing organization to reappoint or nominate somebody new for that position. Just like a reminder, but I, I think we're we're pretty good. Um, other than waiting for Metropolitan Ministries and Commissioner Mariano. So those are just the two. Have. Our next virtual meeting hybrid is scheduled for October 5th at 11 a.m. Um, is there anything that any of the members would like to bring up or share at this point before we adjourn? Good. Okay. Um, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody, for participating in our meeting today, and we look forward to seeing you in October. Thank bye, you. ladies. Thanks for coming oh, in. Bye. Thanks. Appreciate it. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.